And I'm spacing on the guy's name. <laughs> it's all right. It's all good. All right. So, all right. Uh, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Um, so, no, I did not think I would be a security guard because I am not intimidating <laughs> at all. I've been working here since October, and I wanted to work in the museum because I needed, well, I needed a job. <laughs> and I needed a stable form of income, and I wanted to be around art, and it at least feels like on topic with what I want to do, and so it's a good environment. We're here to help protect the art. We're also here to assist visitors, and we're sort of a go-between between, between the, um, the museum and the public, so we provide information. We could also provide a little bit of first aid, band-aid or something if somebody gets hurt, or we can call them a taxi cab. We actually are kind of like a bit like a concierge. Oops, <laughs> concierge. We um, basically are here to help visitors and help them have a good visit at the museum. A lot of downtime, a lot of time to think. I use the time to come up with creative ways of implementing in my work. Hopefully I'm inspired daily. So that's the main reason I'm here. I work at two museums, two art museums, and hold on one sec. Sir, make sure you point around six inches. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry. Uh, what was the question again? Sorry. <laughs> it's always easier when people are appreciating it because it they feel more connected to the work, so they're more less likely to do anything that might harm something that they're admiring. Well, first and foremost is safeguarding the art itself. And um, a big part of that is just making sure that certain rules, and a lot of them seem trivial, are actually followed, you know, backpacks. You don't want someone to turn around and knock over a piece or brush up against a painting, stuff like that. But those rules are there for a reason, and you have to always keep that in mind. I probably gotta get back, man. You got, are we good? Yep. Oh yeah, I definitely gotta go. You gotta have a, a good imagination, or, or you're fortunate if you do have a good imagination on those, those times when it might be a little slower than usual. It is, it is nice just to be able to kind of be in your head. Um, sometimes you're able to look, really be able to look at these pieces around here too, which is great. Good imagination though, I think is really helpful. Exactly. She said it, Rebecca said it, it's the funnest job ever. Nobody spends as much time with collections of art like security guards. You come to this job because you have a passion for art and you want community in some regard. You know, I don't know that I need to find my identity through my work all the time. I'm an artist. Uh, whether I'm doing security or I'm at home cooking in the kitchen, to me it's all art. Morning guys. You guys can head on in, you're all set. Thank you. When I was right out of school, I had some commissions and I was able to just live off of my paintings. Um, but that became really nerve wracking. <laughs> so I, I wanted to get a part-time job. I looked at the Fry and I looked at the Sam. Um, because I, I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to just go work in a restaurant. I wanted something that I felt like was at least relevant to the things that I'm interested in. Well, my project is called To Be Brave Ending Body Shame. And I'm working with women who are survivors of eating disorders, uh, sexual assaults, or even just general, a sense of general body shame. They respond to specific words that I give them that relate to their story such as uh, anorexia, bulimia, grief, violation, um, and then also words like acceptance, transcendence. One thing that's interesting in this painting to me or, or in her response pose is the, the word that she's responding to is big, but it's as though she's trying to make herself look as small as possible, as though she's afraid of taking up space, and that's something I saw again and again with models responding to that word, is this sort of fear of taking up space. I think this is the, this painting is a response to anorexia, 
There's multiple paintings that address eating disorders. All of them, the hands play this pivotal role, and all of them, the eyes are diverted and the hands are kind of doing something to the body. So it's interesting seeing these different models who have different stories and backgrounds, and yet these same kind of themes emerge in their poses. This one I really love because it's one of the few models where she's making very clear eye contact and it's a response to Finn and part of what she's telling me is this idea of like I don't care that I'm not Finn and I'm not going to be Finn and this is just who I am and she has this very defiant look on her face. I have another project called Spicy Little Watercolors and um, I have an online store spicylittlewatercolors.com and I do all these drawings of um, naked ladies and I wanted to um, think of a way to get them out there but it's a it's a nice contrast to the body shame project there's also lots of my friends who want to model for it for them it sort of addresses some of the same themes that are in the body shame project but in kind of a funny way that also makes them feel um, attractive and sexy, so it's cool. <laughs> oh, and I had the idea for the store while I was working <laughs> at the Sam. I don't know what it is about the process, just almost hypnotic. You get a lot of time to think, you know, you're out in the field and you take everything in. It's, it's just magical. I really like the glow on the other side through the windows. I feel like I'm in Pennsylvania or something. I've never been there. Oh, how would I know? <laughs> my bedroom of my one bedroom apartment is my dark room. I mean, I have to black it out. I have my own curtains here set up. Um, so it has to be completely dark in here. A uh, little cheap, I think it's like a two, three megapixel camera, maybe even one. Um, and I, I flew this in the air, I photographed myself. I wasn't intending on photographing myself. There was a model that I was gonna photograph with it, but it turned around and photographed me, but the image turned out really cool. These are my 11 by 14 prints, late grandmother. This was photographed in her hometown of Kagoshima, which is so southern Japan. I think this is around the same time of my late father, and um, I just love the expression on his face. Sarah Olsbold, a uh, great artist. Uh, we, we just had coffee that day. As usual, just talking about art and inspiration and what keeps us going as artists. It's not printed very well, but I'll show it anyway. I uh, photographed this kid off the sand dunes in uh, Pacific, uh, Pacific Beach, Oregon. If they seem comfortable around me, I'll go ask someone, you know, if they want to be photographed. I love it. I love, I love how you're, you're standing right now. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. My name's Thomas. Thomas? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you, too. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm getting these prints ready for a, an upcoming traveling show, a group show. Um, first stop, I believe, is Tacoma Art Museum. But um, I got this printed up. It's called Ghost Bike. This was published in uh, issue 10 of JPEG Magazine. That one's hard to see, so I won't show that. I shot that. It looks like a well, uh, well cover. I've never uh, shown this before, actually. It looks like some kids chalked it over. It's with a little bit of graffiti there. It's kind of cool. I like it a little more. I never really liked this print before, but now it's growing on me. Between two jobs, I work three days a week at the Fry Art Museum and maybe three or four days at the Seattle Art Museum. So I have one day off. And it's just frustrating when you are inhibited in some ways by not having time to do your own stuff. I'm going to move in closer. Kid having a good time.
One of the other things I like about sewing is there's a certain Zen quality to all of this. It's very meditative for me. My husband, he always wants to know why. Why did you put that there as opposed to over there? And I don't often have a good answer for him. This is the older version of this. This I just got. Um, this one is a little fancier. The technology nowadays is just phenomenal. I can take my laptop, create a piece of art in my laptop, send the information from my laptop to the sewing machine, and the sewing machine will stitch it for me. I'll show you this piece. This is one of my, this is actually one of my favorite pieces. I'm fascinated by myth and the creation of mythology. And so she's this mythological being that, that I've created where she was discarded by a child and her spirit came back and she just, she's sort of a spirit of vengeance. She gathers up the spirits of all these discarded toys and, uh, and, and kind of corrupts them in some, some regard. The rag doll is, she's kind of slutty looking and the bunny rabbit's got a drinking problem. And she's very happy with herself. <laughs> the security department actually looks for people that are artists. I'm not only protecting the work, but I'm also getting to share my knowledge, my background. You know, I have a minor in art history, so you know, oftentimes I get all these great questions from people and I can, I can answer them. You know, and they say, we're thinking about this, this artist, and he did this painting called The Execution, and his name begins with a G. Do you know who that is? And I was like, Goya? And they were like, yes! I haven't actually <laughs> named this piece yet. I'm still working on, t on the title, but uh, it's this uh, sort of a, a goddess of the forest or a, a nature spirit. Um, on top of the image, I've quilted on a topography map that give you the reference of this is a place. She's part of this place. She's the spirit of this place. There's all kinds of things happening around us that we don't necessarily see, but are influencing us all the time. How many dreams I can tell you have had that involve work is amazing to me. I have no doubt that seeing some of these images, you know, these pieces with certain motifs on them and certain materials that you see on a daily basis permeate, you know, in your psyche. So this is a piece um, also made a few years ago and it's called Iceberg Snowstorm and it also had a sound element inside of, you know, snow blizzard sounds. People didn't know whether it was an inanimate object or had somebody inside, so that was, that was always kind of fun. This piece I made when I was in grad school, the funny thing about it is that in the city I wasn't able to find, you know, these white rocks. So I went back home to Spokane to visit and I ended up finding these rocks on my walk. I ended up mailing myself this big box of rocks back to New York so then I could, you know, have material to work with. The idea of burrows and the look of burrows have always been appealing to me. This particular piece is one of the burrows and it's an old army blanket actually that I got at the army surplus. But little did I know that this would be loved by cats. Uh, my landlady also has a cat and she likes to go in here as well. We've got apple slash water sound. <laughs> Sounds of bells. Uh, flitter sort of sound that I'm making with my mouth. So that's, that's basically what I would, you know, I'd start to record all these sounds and then bring it to Daniel's and then he'd have his own sounds as well. And yeah. then we just, yeah. Really, it's, it's kind of like a dance with going back and forth, like 
I'm, I'm listening to what she's doing, and then I, I kind of know that it's probably going to drop off here, and then it's going to evolve into something else. And the funny thing is, uh, after working together in the studio for an hour or two, going out into life again, and hearing all the details of all these sounds around you, it's really overwhelming. <laughs> Intergalactic. Thanks for indulging us on this. <laughs> Sort of started as a joke, yeah. but the tunes were actually kind of okay, and we had fun. So you know, uh, Austin used to write lyrics on the floor periodically, because part of the job is you have to be able to go in your own head and like stay there. And that's a lot of people quit really quick because they're not okay in their own head. To be in that job, you can go hours without even talking on a good day, because that means no one's messed up. But like, it is just you. It's you with yourself. Um, so this is the alpha, the very first one. So all these big ones were first. I think it's about one through eight are all these. And one thing I tried to do is keep a color palette that's consistent throughout, partially to make it seem like a series and also to free myself to work more on form and execution since I'm not trained in abstract art, obviously. So this is 12. Uh, this one stopped because all my friends really liked it and <laughs> didn't want to see it change. So I've kept it the way it is. Hopefully I'll sell it. I started working really heavily in black. This is 16. Also a lot of figures popped up around 9. 23. This is later on. Again, I'm trying to pull just spontaneous madness out and not be too figurative, which I can do sometimes. And this is 13. And then <laughs> these are the beginnings of the next series, which will be done in oil. At the very least, I paint about three times a night, usually a few hours, sometimes way more. But you work, you work really hard, and you wake up in the morning, you're exhausted, you put on the uniform, but you feel good because you've accomplished something. And then you walk into a gallery and you see a Lee Krasner. That person worked on the exact same thing you did, the same problem, and came out with a totally different and much more mature, fuller expression and, and answer to that problem. And then you have other artists, because almost all the guards in some form are artists. And that helps move you along too, because you know you're not the only one whittling away in the hours outside of work. Sometimes it's nice to come home and, and have a physical showing that you're something outside of your job, you're something outside of other situations, and you see what you've done, and that you've done a lot, and that you've worked really hard, and you're, you're accomplishing something. I just started doing this quilted painting thing um, in the last few years. It's a bit of a, a, a tribute to my mom who was a quilter. And she in fact is the, the seamstress who crafted me many um, a leopard suit in my youth. I just got a, a black and white uh, printout of it. I um, was... Uh, Working, at, working it up through sketching, um, computer. It's a story of a tadpole who um, 
is uh, a little bit late in developing. All of his friends are starting to get arms and legs, and he isn't, hasn't got his yet, and so he's kind of bummed out. So that's a children's book I'm working on. Um, also got another one that I'm working on um, that is about uh, pumpkins and crows. And uh, yeah, so got a couple of children's books in the works. And this is kind of one of my um, lifelong dreams too, is to make my own children's books. So kind of just incorporating it all together. I posted a picture of this on Facebook and one of my friends who coincidentally was, I met as a guard at the art museum, Karen Kirchhoff, she commented that she really loved the, the blue head and she liked the idea that it was like kind of blending into the sky. And so even though I was going to make it um, the same color as the rest of the bird, I decided to leave the head blue just because I thought that was such a great idea. So sometimes it's kind of cool to get feedback from people. You never know how it'll change the way you look at your own artwork. I think that even a lot of the employees at the museum don't realize that a lot of the guards are artists. But then again, for all I know, some of the other museum uh, departments could be um, artists, and I don't know that either. I guess it's not until you're really working with somebody that you get to know that kind of stuff about them. I don't know what I'm doing when I start. Uh, I just kind of make it up as I go along. And then I guess I'll just get to a point where it just seems done. It's just like, uh, if I do any more, it's going to look overworked. I'd rather have it look unfinished than overdone. That's why I'm really glad there's the staff show because I've been working on this series for a better part of six months, and I wasn't really sure when I would finish it. So I'm, I'm glad that the show's happening. Um, it's going up the end of May, and... Uh, that's when it'll be done. You're here at the Seattle Art Museum Staff Art Show. It's finally come to fruition. Today is the opening day. You know, there's lots of people here. We're really excited. It's been a great process getting all the staff involved and having them all submit work. And everyone gets to be a part of it. Everyone gets a piece in the show. And everyone gets to be able to see just how amazing all the staff is here. The show is called Intrigue 2, um, art from the staff of the Seattle Art Museum. And we call our show Intrigue because we are always intrigued to find out what our coworkers are up to in their off hours when they're off making artwork. So it's really great to see the variety um, of work that we have and variety of talent. I love working with the artists here. I love getting to know people and getting to see everyone's work here has been amazing because you see people sketching on the floor and you see their little drawings and notepads and on post-it notes and it's so awesome to get to see people's work hanging and see this other side of everyone that you don't necessarily expect what their work's going to look like based on who they are. So this is a series of three photos that I photographed last year while I was on a road trip from New York to Seattle to move out here and I really like to capture broad landscapes and then small details. I've always found that for me the heart of places that I travel to and places that I visit is in the tiny details that not a lot of people notice. Okay, so this is a film still from the movie Piero Le Fou by Jean-Luc Godard. I um, basically just put the film on pause and utilize it or think about it as a still life. Uh, well, I mean, it's high traffic area, so I mean, I guess that's a good thing. Godard would certainly appreciate it for its absurdity and, and, and for its partial humor, so um, I think it's, a, it's a, actually a very apt location. So. These are my peppers, crescendo. Well, it's all about the patterns and the flows that you see in, in nature. You know, I did this entire thing and then did not like the color and had to go over it again. As green as it is now, it's not nearly as green as it was before I touched it up. <laughs> it was sickeningly green. So these are two of mine and they're both digital. I love fantasy landscapes because it gives you that sense of exploration. I think it makes people feel happy to, to go out and look at nature more closely. Paradoxically, 
because it's fantasy. I try to paint from memory, so I try to express the feeling that I remember from different settings. I love being a guard. I love being around all the creative energy here, the beautiful atmosphere, and seeing the art every day. It couldn't be a better fit for me. <laughs> wait, wait, that's pressure. I can't, I can't, I can't operate on No, you're right. When I, when I started here, I was not an artist. And when I started being around people that were inspired by art, it inspired me. And I started painting. You're not supposed to talk here and everything, but I think people do end up talking on the sidelines and becoming close. I guess you could say I'm a beginning painter, a beginning artist. After working here at the museum about five years, I started thinking, well, maybe I ought to try a little sketching. I think art museums are the kind of thing that uh, stimulate the imagination of everyone. And some people can pick up on it and go with it because it's, it's all right fun. You don't have to be stressed about anything. This is called Otaku Number 2. It's part of a series of uh, otaku pieces, which is a uh, Japanese subculture. A large percentage of the people that work here are artists. We understand a lot more on the process and how important it is on an individual level, because a lot of us make stuff ourselves and uh, it is personal to us. Being able to have your work on display at the museum is probably one of the highlights of being a guard. And there's so many great artists that have great talents that, that nobody ever gets to see. And so now they can see it. And now they can see what's, what's so amazing about this museum. We all have talents that are hidden. We're all talented.